it can never be over. So I, I cannot imagine actually this situation that, that it's over. So we saw this morning a presentation from MasterCard that uh, you know we have a long history of digitalization of the e-commerce and, and the banking as well, and and uh, it will continue forever, especially for the banks who are seeking for the constant growth and, and constant constant development. Uh, I agree with the colleagues that the uh, situation is quite, I would say, not good uh, in a region comparing to the best players in, in the class. And there is a lot of reasons behind. Uh, one of them could be regulation, but um, I have to say in Serbia we have quite advanced regulation. And, uh, and uh, this, this is definitely not, not the reason which is, which is, which is uh, stopping us. Uh, I see two uh, most uh, important uh, bottlenecks. Uh, one of them is coming from our history, coming from our legacy, uh, which is extremely huge. All of these papers, all of these processes, all of these systems that we have in the past, we somehow, we have a challenge to abandon them. And what do we usually do? We try to create uh, the processes new digital processes around them. And uh, we end up with, uh, you know, many middle layer complicated uh, uh, systems, then we're putting some additional hundreds of satellite systems into the existing, existing uh, uh, architecture, and we end up with a, with a mess. Uh, and, but it's, it's easy to blame, it's not easy to, to answer these questions and how to solve this puzzle. Also, changing completely your architecture is not easy. I mean, uh, actually the, the top three reason the CEO can lose the job these days is to change core banking system. So, so I mean, the, the, the leadership is also kind of in a challenge how to, how to approach this. But, uh, we have to find a way. We have to find a way to, to abandon the, the, the old story, which is dragging us behind, and which is actually creating competitive advantage for the fintechs, which are not having these legacies. And this is the reason why fintechs, why neobanks are so much better in this sense. The second one is how do we approach uh, digitalization and transformation uh, itself. Uh, I think many banks are looking from an inward perspective, so they want to change the system, they want to change the, the, the way how they're doing uh, the, the business, and that they're happy with a certain results. We change this system to that system, and our employees are more happy, they spend less time, and they have nicer screens, but if you look the impact on the customer experience, it's zero. So we have a lot of banks praising we are digital champions, we are best digital banks, we do this, we do that. But in the end, when you look at the customer story, when you look at the customer journeys, nothing changed. I was really depressed reading the PwC regional benchmark from, from last year, where there was, a, there was a point regarding digitally initiated loans, not approved loans, not fully end-to-end -end with our completely human involvement. It's just initiated loans. In our region, it's 7%. So until we find a way that in this day-to-day -day banking operations, like account opening for, for private individuals, for the small businesses, these this, uh, cash loans, consumer loans, if we don't find a way to create these customer journeys within a minutes, we're going to lag behind, and then and, and, uh, we will not catch up the best players in the class. So if, if I can describe in one sentence when they see the current digitalization uh, status in a region, uh, we put a lipstick on a hog, but it's still a hog. 